to make is to do with it and the verb. They must match. If the, the subject is he goes to the beach on Saturdays, he goes to use a singular verb form. And this is true most of the time. Now, you might be... So here, Dana, for, for the subject here, you, you understand? The sentence here is present simple. The sentence here again is present simple. We have here subject, we. So if the subject here is plural, so we use the singular verb. We don't, uh, we don't add anything. So we say we go, you go, and they go. But if the subject is singular, like he, so we use singular verb. So we say he goes, she goes, and it goes. Okay, Dana? Okay. Okay. Thinking that you understand subject verb agreement. It's simple, it's easy, right? But it's the first thing that many English learners forget. But don't worry, there are some simple standard rules that you can use to help you. But some aspects of singular and plural noun usage make this a little more complex. So that's, so that's why, why I'm going, going to teach, teach you some tips to master subject-verb agreement in English. Before, Before we start, I want to highlight that there are two main areas where subject-verb agreement can cause you problems. The first is in your writing. And it's important to know the subject-verb agreement rules and how to use them correctly so that your English writing is grammatically correct. The other is your speaking skills. Now, now, perhaps, perhaps you, you feel confident that you know how to match verbs to their subject, subject. but the, the challenge is making that clear when you're speaking. And, and sometimes you might not even know this is a problem for you. The, the final consonant sounds are so important to communicating clearly, but for many English learners, it's not that easy to do. Pronouncing the difference between do and does. Now, now, if, if this, this sounds, sounds like you, then, then I, I want you to try and practice with me out loud during this lesson. lesson. Make, Make sure you're hitting those final consonant sounds. Okay, okay. let's begin. In, in the, the present, present tense, tense, nouns and verbs agree in opposite, opposite ways. When, when your, your subject, subject is plural, plural you usually, usually add s, s to show that it's plural, plural right? right? Car becomes cars. Baby, baby becomes babies. babies. But, but when, when your subject, subject is plural, you do not add an S to your verb. The cars look expensive. Our noun, cars, is plural. Cars. Now, our verb agrees with our subject. The cars look expensive. Now, compare this to the car looks expensive. When, when our noun, noun is singular, singular our, our verb needs, needs to include an S. S. In, in these examples, the noun and the verb agree in opposite ways. But I can already hear you saying, what about if your subject is I or you? They're singular subjects, but they don't use the singular verb form. Yes, but they're an exception to the rule. Subject verb agreement rules are different when your subject is in the third person singular. So that's when your subject is a he, a she, or an it. The subjects I and you are different. Even though they're also singular nouns, they take the plural form of the verb. And you just need to remember that. I like to go swimming, she likes to go swimming. Both, Both of these subjects, subjects are singular, singular but the, the verb forms are different. Now, now if there is an auxiliary verb, a helping verb in your sentence, like do or does in the present simple, or am, is, are, was, were in the continuous tenses, or have or has in the perfect tenses, 
then you need to think about your subject verb agreement because the auxiliary verb becomes the agreeing verb, the verb that agrees with the subject. The dogs don't want it. The dog doesn't want it. We're going to the beach. He's going to the beach. Anna and Tony have been driving for hours. Anna has been driving for hours. Now, modal verbs like may, could, Okay, before moving to modal verbs, let me, uh, let me say something to you here, Dana. So, for this part, yes, I'd like to focus in this part. We said that here, if the subject is plural, so this means that the subject has S. So we don't add S to the verb. You understand me, Dana? But if the subject is singular, no S here, so we put S to the verb. So they are opposite. Do you understand me, Dana? Dana, are you here? Yes, yes, sir. Do you understand this part? Yeah. So if the subject again. Still, still less than minute for the meeting to end. Do I rejoin? Yes, I'm going to send you another link, okay? Okay. So as I told you, if the subject here, if, if the subject has S, so we don't add S to the verb. But if the subject uh, without S here singular, so we add S to the verb. Okay, Dana? Okay. Also, for, uh, but there is an exception.